What made the Roaring Twenties? Well, Roar? Welcome back to Compelling History, and today we're about to find out how this decade got its name. The Roaring Twenties, a decade defined by prosperity, cultural revolution, and societal shifts, emerged as an unexpected phoenix from the ashes of World War I. In the wake of the Great War, soldiers returned home to face a recession and an uncertain future. Unemployment plagued the ranks of veterans as industries struggled to transition back to peacetime production. However, the dark clouds of economic turmoil would soon give way to an era of unprecedented growth and transformation, setting the stage for an exhilarating yet precarious journey through the 1920s. Welcome back to Compelling History. Today we'll begin our four-part journey through the history of a defining era in American history, the Roaring Twenties. This video will explore the economic prosperity that defined the decade, and in later videos we'll cover cultural changes, technological advancements, and the crash of 1929. Make sure you're subscribed so you know once the next series starts going live next week, and don't forget to like and subscribe to help out the channel. Part 1 bouncing back after World War I. Following the challenging years of the Great War, many soldiers returned home to an economy in recession, caused by the remapping down of industries which had been operating at full capacity to support the war effort. Once, industries began shutting down production. Following the November 11th armistice, a mild recession began to take hold worldwide, and by 1920 the situation had significantly worsened into what is now referred to as the Recession of 1920 and 21. A growing number of veterans were entering the workforce by 1920, with industries not yet fully transitioned back to a peacetime production levels and therefore unable to absorb all of these returning veterans. This inevitably led to many veterans becoming unemployed and unable to afford their former lives in the new economic situation of the 1920s. However, this economic recession wouldn't last long. By July of 1921, natural changes in the market along with federal policy would see this recession start to ease. Given how it started, many people did not expect much from the post-war years, regardless of being on the winning side. This makes it all the more impressive that the years following the 1920-1921 recession would be some of the most prosperous times in American history. Technological advancements during the First World War and this time period in general would lead to improvements in how people worked, which in return increased overall productivity. They were so important to the development of the 1920s that we've decided to dedicate an entire video to the topic, which will be released later this month. For the purposes of this video, we'll briefly discuss the advancements in consumer technology, which had immediate impacts on the lives of people living during the 1920s. Among these include the advent of the radio, popularization of cinema, and medical discoveries which saved countless lives. However, arguably the most important technologies which took off during the 1920s was the automobile. While cars had been invented over a decade prior to the Roaring Twenties, their popularity would explode after the war with the introduction of the Ford Model T. This automobile helped revolutionize transportation and would also change the lives of the people manufacturing it. When discussing why the Model T cost less than what it could, Henry Ford would explain that making the product they work on more affordable and therefore attainable made workers more likely to take pride in their work and get to experience the fruits of their labor. Advancements in manufacturing, such as the introduction of the assembly line for the Ford Model T production, would lead to products across different industries to become affordable to more working people than was previously attainable. Furthermore, an increase in consumerism and the demand for items like cars, radios, and home appliances would create more employment opportunities for the veterans who had entered the 1920s unable to find work. Years of war rationing followed by a 16-month economic recession had left people desperate to return to normal life without worrying about earning money or affording things outside the necessities of life. Once the economy began to pick up in mid to late 1921, consumer trends were already shifting towards a more excessive and carefree mindset. People began being encouraged by promotions and their peers to go out and spend money on the latest trends taking off during this time of cultural revolution, also covered in a future video. A trend which would only be further accelerated with the previously mentioned technological advancements in consumer products. Many of these products, although cheaper to make than previously thought possible, were still very expensive for the average working class family or individual. To remedy this, many stores and other institutions would introduce installment buying for items like cars, furniture, or home appliances. 
While this would allow more people to obtain these products than previously possible, the lack of comprehensive knowledge and regulatory oversight concerning these new payment options resulted in a situation where many individuals accumulated levels of debt that would later prove unsustainable. These changes in consumerism post-World War I changed how everyday people lived their lives in ways which are still felt to this day. However, consumer trends likely would have remained largely unchanged for many people, if not for the mass migration of people from rural areas to the growing cities. There are many reasons for this shift and how it impacted consumerism, which will be discussed in the next section. Part 2. Mass Migration to Urban Areas the mass migration of people from rural areas to cities began well before the 1920s. While cities were already established as hubs of industry, significant technological advancements occurred around the time of World War I, which further accelerated this trend. Changes in manufacturing and transportation played a crucial role in this urbanization process for many cities across the United States. Furthermore, the 1920s saw a significant wave of African-American migration from the American South to Northern states, which were often perceived as more diverse and accepting. Between 1916 and 1970, an estimated 6 million African Americans left the South for northern cities, including industrial hubs like Philadelphia, Detroit, Chicago, and New York City. This migration was driven by a combination of factors, including economic hardships in the South due to Jim Crow laws, racial segregation, and hate crimes. Many people chose cities in the North for their better economic and employment opportunities compared to rural areas. Wages for African Americans would unfortunately still be less than what white workers were making, but these positions would still pay higher than those in the South. These factors, plus a rise in immigration, would lead to the 1920s becoming the first time in American history where more people lived in urban areas than rural, 51.2% urban to 48.8% rural. This marked a major transition in American history, from being an agrarian country to the start of becoming an urban one. With more and more people concentrated in large urban areas, there was a growing need for additional services, employment opportunities, and the ability for cities to provide more public services like improved infrastructure and transportation. As automotives grew in popularity, the U.S. government would implement a tax on gasoline, which would be used to improve infrastructure such as roads, bridges, and regular highway maintenance. This would also make the movement of goods and resources in and out of the industrial areas of urban cities easier and more efficient. American cities by this point were being designed with the automobile in mind, which only cemented its necessarily in American life and in American industry. As mentioned earlier, cities were the hub of manufacturing during the Roaring Twenties and led to thousands of jobs for residents. These factories would produce a wide range of products, including automobiles, radios, refrigerators, meat packaging, and steel industries. Working in these factories was far from great, but working in these roles were starting to improve during the Roaring Twenties. Companies like Ford would introduce six-day, then later seven-day work weeks for all of its employees for them to have a better work-life balance. This was made possible by an increase in wages and the incredible sales of their vehicles, which were priced in a way which allowed employees to afford them over time. While the improvements in working conditions mentioned were not uniform across all companies, they played a significant role in driving labor improvements in factories operating in cities during the 1920s. These changes contributed to making city life more appealing to workers. Part 3. Booming Stock Market Perhaps the most defining aspects of the Roaring Twenties, which made this decade's prosperity possible, were governmental regulations and policies, along with the boom in stockbrokers promoting stocks on the bull market. Following World War I, the Federal Reserve sought to keep interest rates low and make credit more readily available to encourage investment and economic growth when the country was in desperate need of it. This was amplified by a laissez-faire approach to the economy with many economists and policymakers at the time emphasized minimal government intervention. Over time, this ultimately led policymakers to believe that the economy was self-sustaining and therefore wouldn't need significant intervention. Nevertheless, in the short term, all of these conditions led to a booming real estate and stock market, creating the perception of widespread prosperity and economic success. This perception, among other factors, led to increases in speculation and margin buying during the Roaring Twenties, eventually leading to the crash of 29.
Now for a brief lesson on economics from someone who took an economics course in university and got 33% on the first midterm he thought he had aced. Speculation refers to buying and selling financial assets like stocks with the expectation of making quick profits based on the anticipated future price movements rather than the actual value of the asset. While this would be acceptable in moderation, many people at the time thought the stock market was going to continue to rise forever and invested large portions of their savings or even borrowed money to invest in stocks, hoping they would rise over time. This led to surges in stock prices, particularly in industries like automobiles, aviation, and radios, with some experiencing rapid and unsustainable gains. As mentioned, some people would purchase stocks using money borrowed from financial institutions. These loans would use the stocks themselves as collateral, allowing investors to control a larger quantity of shares than they could with their own capital alone. This ease of access for people to get stocks and loans made margin buying extremely popular during the Roaring Twenties, since they could help their investors maximize their potential profits and only required between 10-20% of the total purchase price up front. The lack of effective financial regulations is a significant reason for both the boom and bust of the Roaring Twenties. Prior to 1934, there was no federal agency responsible for regulating the securities and stock markets, meaning there were no uniform rules or oversight mechanisms to prevent fraudulent activities or to ensure fair and transparent trading. This would aid in the rise of bucket shops, unregulated, often illegal, establishments which made them hotbeds for fraudulent practices. Some individuals took advantage of these bucket shops to manipulate the market by persuading people to buy specific stocks. Once they had convinced as many people as possible to invest in these stocks and couldn't drive the price higher, they would sell them off before others began to realize that the stock was not worth what they had been led to believe. In other words, some individuals with an understanding of the market engaged in what is commonly referred to as a pump and dump scheme, somewhat like NFTs if a modern example helps you understand better. All of these factors led to soaring stock prices and a prolonged bull market that was highly volatile, with prices sometimes fluctuating dramatically within short periods. This, over the span of the decade, would eventually be the downfall of the era we now refer to as the Roaring Twenties. Conclusion the Roaring Twenties, emerging from the aftermath of World War I, defied expectations and transformed America in unprecedented ways. In the wake of economic hardships and veterans' struggles, the Roaring Twenties burst forth as an era of unparalleled change, driven by economic prosperity. The Roaring Twenties was a complex era, one that celebrated excess and innovation. Its legacy persists, not only in the economic lessons learned, but also in the cultural changes that would shape the decade. In our next video, we will explore how these cultural shifts during the Roaring Twenties left an enduring mark on American society, forever altering the course of history. Thank you so much for watching the beginning of Compelling History series on the Roaring Twenties. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Next week, we'll be exploring cultural changes during the era. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out.